The significance of being a photographer is the ability to capture a moment. It's kind of going against that like strive of the future, I guess, because it's always like go faster and forget more or like go faster and take more in, but ultimately you didn't remember anything. And it was just the ability to remember points in life that are important. To know that the person or place that was in that photo had significance. I think that's what makes being a photographer viable. Like there's a reason to remember. I started shooting photos in the transition of junior high to high school. I was given, or not given, I think I kind of stole my parents' uh, SLR. And so just kind of took it and experimented with it in the way that I would want to see a photograph created. From that, it went on to shooting photos of skateboarding. The more that I got involved in skateboarding, the more I got involved in photography, but not in the sense of actually photographing skateboarders. It was showing what was more behind the scenes, like getting a little extra from the story through those photos. And it wasn't just necessarily capturing that one thing, it was capturing an environment and you could always show your take on it. A lot of it was like, shooting something, not having a clue if it was like good lighting or any of the factors that made it a photograph and the challenge of making a better and better print that looked aesthetically pleasing was what I was after because you can never duplicate the way someone can capture a photograph. So it can always change and you can always show something different whether it's that emotion, that stop, that little fraction of time. In junior high, actually, he wanted to be a chiropractor, and we thought, oh, good, you know, the guy's got science marks, and, you know, it should all work out. Because Brendan didn't always, as much as he said he wanted to be a photographer, didn't actually show it enough, we thought. So that didn't seem to make sense. But um, obviously, you know, when you look back and you see the photographs he's taken and all his interest in, you know, cameras and camera equipment and things like that, I think it sort of made a, a progression. And then realizing it was more than just taking pictures, it was more about people and feelings. And that was very odd for Reg to see that because Reg wasn't a very touchy feely kind of person to get in touch with his emotions. And to be a photographer, I think you have to. My dad never really understood my career choice in photography. He knew it would be hard, and I think he just didn't want me to struggle or deal with hardship. My dad wanted the best for me and for me to do my best. The family doctor had been taking blood tests and had been noticing his iron levels were low. And then the last year, 
the year he got ill. They took blood and it was an acute leukemia. He was put on to chemo for seven days straight for 24 hours a day. They didn't know which way he was going. Acute leukemia can kill you overnight. So that was a long haul. After being diagnosed, he got to see so much more of my life in those years that he was in the hospital. So it came to be a far more open relationship with him. I knew it mattered to him. It wasn't as superficial as I once thought. And for him to talk about it with me showed that he actually wanted to talk to me. It wasn't superficial at all. So the last six months, for sure, of his life were inundated with constant appointments, constant, constant appointments. So, you know, your body gets tired, I think your mind gets numb, and you just sort of carry on. There were a lot of times he didn't want to continue, and he did, probably just thinking of myself and the kids, until the last day before the week that he passed away. Yeah, he knew he had to say things so that he, well, he could have no regrets anyways. We probably had more regrets than him, but that's neither here nor there right now, so, yeah. I thought he would have beaten it, and it was only until he randomly phoned me did I come to know that he wasn't bad. He let me know how proud he was of me. And he knew that I could do whatever I wanted to do. And then he let me know he was tired and he was done. He didn't say he gave up. He said he got too tired. He just wanted to relax and not have to work. And I knew that he was okay to be tired. It would be better than possibly hurt himself more mentally trying to get through it any more than he had. The kids had seen their dad sick for better part of 10 years. So it does take its toll. I think they'll be once they can sort of verbalize it, be very different people, but neither of them are able to verbalize it right now. And even for myself, that's probably the same way too. And I think all of us will have a different way to do that. And I think Brendan now is, this is his way. I want to create images that can showcase everything that is good about their family despite whatever situation's going on. To know that you can go back to this image and they're proud to say it is a photo of their family. And I'm hoping that through helping others, I can go back to that feeling because it would have been 
a time where we could have sat and just been a family and to know that I was there for them and they would be there for me. I want to stop that time for others so they can just be a family. They don't have to be a family where someone has cancer. You can just be a family. If there was one thing that I could tell my dad, it would be how much I appreciated what he did for me. I know for what he gave us as a family, it might not have seemed like a lot. And there was times where I was frustrated on how he would act, but he gave all he could and I wanted to let him know that I appreciated him more. For more and more of the shoots that I've been doing, part of the images that I've created I've come to be happy that it would be something that I could show him and he would probably think was really great.